a bowed plot is a graph of the transfer function of a linear, time invariant system versus frequency, plotted with a log frequency axis, to show the system's frequency response. It is usually a combination of a bowed magnitude plot, expressing the magnitude of the frequency response gain, and a bowed phase plot, expressing the frequency response phase shift. Overview Among his several important contributions to circuit theory and control theory, engineer Hendrik Wade Bode, while working at Bell Labs in the United States in the 1930s, devised a simple but accurate method for graphing gain and phase shift plots. These bear his name. Bowed gain plot and bowed phase plot. Bowed is pronounced B O H D. The magnitude axis of the bowed plot is usually expressed as decibels of power, that is by the 20 log rule, 20 times the common logarithm of the amplitude gain. With the magnitude gain being logarithmic, bowed plots make multiplication of magnitudes a simple matter of adding distances on the graph, since a bowed phase plot is a graph of phase versus frequency also plotted on a log frequency axis, usually used in conjunction with the magnitude plot, to evaluate how much a signal will be phase shifted. For example a signal described by, a scene, I perm LT, may be attenuated but also phase shifted. If the system attenuates it by a factor X and phase shifts it by AI the signal out of the system will be sin, I perm LT AAI. The phase shift I is generally a function of frequency. Phase can also be added directly from the graphical values, a fact that is mathematically clear when phase is seen as the imaginary part of the complex logarithm of a complex gain. In Figure 1, A, the bowed plots are shown for the one-pole high-pass filter function, where F is the frequency in Hertz, and F1 is the pole position in Hertz, F1 equals 100 Hertz in the figure. Using the rules for complex numbers, the magnitude of this function is while the phase is. Care must be taken that the inverse tangent is set up to return degrees, not radians. On the bowed magnitude plot, decibels are used, and the plotted magnitude is a euro florin. In figure 1, b, the bowed plots are shown for the one-pole low-pass filter function. Also shown in figure 1, a, and 1, b, are the straight-line approximations to the bowed plots that are used in hand analysis, and described later. The magnitude and phase bowed plots can seldom be changed independently of each other a euro changing the amplitude response of the system will most likely change the phase characteristics and vice versa. For minimum phase systems the phase and amplitude characteristics can be obtained from each other with the use of the Hilbert transform. If the transferred function is a rational function with real poles and zeros, then the bowed plot can be approximated with straight lines. These asymptotic approximations are called straight-line bowed plots or uncorrected bowed plots and are useful because they can be drawn by hand following a few simple rules. Simple plots can even be predicted without drawing them. The approximation can be taken further by correcting the value at each cutoff frequency. The plot is then called a corrected bowed plot. Rules for handmade bowed plot The premise of a bowed plot is that one can consider the log of a function in the form as a sum of the logs of its poles and zeros. This idea is used explicitly in the method for drawing phase diagrams. The method for drawing amplitude plots implicitly uses this idea, but since the log of the amplitude of each pole or zero always starts at zero and only has one asymptote change, the method can be simplified. Straight line amplitude plot, amplitude decibels is usually done using to define decibels. Given a transferred function in the form, where and are constants, and h is the transferred function, at every value of s where, increase the slope of the line by per decade, at every value of s where, decrease the slope of the line by per decade. The initial value of the graph depends on the boundaries. The initial point is found by putting the initial angular frequency I per mil into the function and finding h, g per mil. The initial slope of the function at the initial value depends on the number and order of zeros and poles that are at values below the initial value, and are found using the first two rules. To handle irreducible second-order polynomials, can, in many cases, be approximated as Note that zeros and poles happen when I per mil is equal to a certain or. 
This is because the function in question is the magnitude of h, g per mil, and since it is a complex function. Thus at any place where there is a zero or pole involving the term, the magnitude of that term is. Corrected amplitude plot, to correct a straight line amplitude plot, at every zero, put a point above the line, at every pole, put a point below the line, draw a smooth curve through those points using the straight lines as asymptotes. Note that this correction method does not incorporate how to handle complex values of all. In the case of an irreducible polynomial, the best way to correct the plot is to actually calculate the magnitude of the transferred function at the pole or zero corresponding to the irreducible polynomial, and put that dot over or under the line at that pole or zero. Straight line phase plot, given a transferred function in the same form as above. The idea is to draw separate plots for each pole and zero, then add them up. The actual phase curve is given by. To draw the phase plot, for each pole and zero, if A is positive, start line at zero degrees, if A is negative, start line at 180 degrees, if the sum of the number of unstable zeros and poles is odd, add 180 degrees to that basis. At every, increase the slope by degrees per decade, beginning one decade before, at every, decrease the slope by degrees per decade, beginning one decade before, unstable poles and zeros have opposite behavior, flatten the slope again when the phase has changed by degrees or degrees, after plotting one line for each pole or zero, add the lines together to obtain the final phase plot. That is, the final phase plot is the superposition of each earlier phase plot. Example, a passive low pass RC filter, for instance has the following transferred function expressed in the frequency domain. From the transferred function it can be determined that the cutoff frequency point Fc is at the frequency. Or at, where is the angular cutoff frequency in radians per second? The transferred function in terms of the angular frequencies becomes. The above equation is the normalized form of the transferred function. The bowed plot is shown in figure 1, b, above, and construction of the straight line approximation is discussed next. Magnitude plot the magnitude of the transferred function above given by the decibel gain expression. When plotted versus input frequency on a logarithmic scale, can be approximated by two lines and it forms the asymptotic magnitude bowed plot of the transferred function, for angular frequencies below it is a horizontal line at zero decibel since that low frequencies the term is small and can be neglected, making the decibel gain equation above equal to zero. For angular frequencies above it is a line with a slope of a 20 decibels per decade since that high frequencies the term dominates and the decibel gain expression above simplifies to which is a straight line with a slope of a 20 decibels per decade. These two lines meet at the corner frequency. From the plot, it can be seen that for frequencies well below the corner frequency, the circuit has an attenuation of zero decibels, corresponding to a unity pass band gain that is the amplitude of the filter output equals the amplitude of the input. Frequencies above the corner frequency are attenuated a euro the higher the frequency, the higher the attenuation. Phase plot, the phase bowed plot is obtained by plotting the phase angle of the transferred function given by versus, where under the input and cutoff angular frequencies respectively. For input frequencies much lower than corner, the ratio is small and therefore the phase angle is close to zero. As the ratio increases the absolute value of the phase increases and becomes a euro 45 degrees when. As the ratio increases for input frequencies much greater than the corner frequency, the phase angle asymptotically approaches a 90 degrees. The frequency scale for the phase plot is logarithmic. Normalized plot, the horizontal frequency axis in both the magnitude and phase plots, can be replaced by the normalized frequency ratio. In such a case the plot is said to be normalized and units of the frequencies are no longer used since all input frequencies are now expressed as multiples of the cutoff frequency. An example with pole and zero, figures 2 to 5 further illustrate construction of bowed plots. This example with both a pole and a zero shows how to use superposition. To begin, the components are presented separately. Figure 2 shows the bowed magnitude plot for a zero and a low pass pole, 
and compares the two with the bowed straight line plots. The straight line plots are horizontal up to the pole location and then drop at 20 dB decade. The second figure 3 does the same for the phase. The phase plots are horizontal up to a frequency factor of 10 below the pole location and then drop at 45 a degree slash decade until the frequency is 10 times higher than the pole location. The plots then are again horizontal at higher frequencies at a final, total phase change of 90 a degree. Figure 4 and Figure 5 show how superposition of a pole and zero plot is done. The bowed straight line plots again are compared with the exact plots. The zero has been moved to higher frequency than the pole to make a more interesting example. Notice in Figure 4 that the 20 dB decade drop of the pole is arrested by the 20 dB decade rise of the zero resulting in a horizontal magnitude plot for frequencies above the zero location. Notice in Figure 5 in the phase plot that the straight line approximation is pretty approximate in the region where both pole and zero affect the phase. Notice also in Figure 5 that the range of frequencies where the phase changes in the straight line plot is limited to frequencies a factor of 10 above and below the pole location. Where the phase of the pole and the zero both are present, the straight line phase plot is horizontal because the 45 a degree slash decade drop of the pole is arrested by the overlapping 45 a degree slash decade rise of the zero in the limited range of frequencies where both are active contributors to the phase. Example with pole and zero. Gain margin and phase margin. Bowed plots are used to assess the stability of negative feedback amplifiers by finding the gain and phase margins of an amplifier. The notion of gain and phase margin is based upon the gain expression for a negative feedback amplifier given by. Where AFB is the gain of the amplifier with feedback, I squared is the feedback factor and AOL is the gain without feedback. The gain AOL is a complex function of frequency with both magnitude and phase. Examination of this relation shows the possibility of infinite gain if the product I squared AOL equals a one bowed plots are used to determine just how close an amplifier comes to satisfying this condition. Key to this determination are two frequencies. The first, labeled here as F180, is the frequency where the open loop gain flip sign. The second, labeled here FO decibel, is the frequency where the magnitude of the product I squared AOL equals 1. That is, frequency F180 is determined by the condition, where vertical bars denote the magnitude of a complex number, and frequency FO decibel is determined by the condition. One measure of proximity to instability is the gain margin. The bowed phase plot locates the frequency where the phase V squared AOL reaches a 180 a degree denoted here as frequency F180. Using this frequency, the bowed magnitude plot finds the magnitude of I squared AOL. If I squared AOL 180 equals 1, the amplifier is unstable, as mentioned. If I squared AOL 180 less than 1, instability does not occur, and the separation in decibel of the magnitude of I squared AOL 180 from I squared AOL equals 1 is called the gain margin. Because a magnitude of 1 is 0 decibels, the gain margin is simply one of the equivalent forms, 20 log 10, I squared AOL 180, equals 20 log 10, AOL 180, a 20 log 10, 1 slash I squared. Another equivalent measure of proximity to instability is the phase margin. The bowed magnitude plot locates the frequency where the magnitude of I squared AOL reaches unity, denoted here as frequency FO decibel. Using this frequency, the bowed phase plot finds the phase V squared AOL. If the phase V squared AOL, FO decibel, are 180 a degree, the instability condition cannot be met at any frequency and the distance of the phase at FO decibel in degrees above a 180 a degree is called the phase margin. If a simple yes or no on the stability issue is all that is needed, the amplifier is stable if FO decibel F180. This criterion is sufficient to predict stability only for amplifiers satisfying some restrictions on their pole and zero positions. Although these restrictions usually are met, if they are not another method must be used, such as the Nywist plot. Optimal gain and phase margins may be computed using the Van Linear Euro Pick Interpolation Theory. 
Examples using bowed plots, figures 6 and 7 illustrate the gain behavior and terminology. For a three-pole amplifier, figure 6 compares the bowed plot for the gain without feedback AOL with the gain with feedback AFB. See negative feedback amplifier for more detail. In this example, AOL equals 100 decibels at low frequencies, and 1 slash I squared equals 58 decibels. At low frequencies, AFB are per mil 58 decibels as well. Because the open loop gain AOL is plotted and not the product I squared AOL, the condition AOL equals 1 slash I squared decides FO decibel. The feedback gain at low frequencies and for large AOL is AFB a per mil 1 slash I squared, so an equivalent way to find FO decibel is to look where the feedback gain intersects the open loop gain. Near this crossover of the two gains at FO decibel, the bar cores and criteria are almost satisfied in this example, and the feedback amplifier exhibits a massive peak in gain. Beyond the unity gain frequency FO decibel, the open loop gain is sufficiently small that AFB a per mil AOL. Figure 7 shows the corresponding phase comparison, the phase of the feedback amplifier is nearly zero out to the frequency F180 where the open loop gain has a phase of a 180 a degree. In this vicinity, the phase of the feedback amplifier plunges abruptly downward to become almost the same as the phase of the open loop amplifier. Comparing the label points in figure 6 and figure 7, it is seen that the unity gain frequency FO decibel and the phase flip frequency F180 are very nearly equal in this amplifier, F180 a per mil FO decibel a per mil 3.332 a kilohertz, which means the gain margin and phase margin are nearly zero. The amplifier is borderline stable. Figures 8 and 9 illustrate the gain margin and phase margin for a different amount of feedback I squared. The feedback factor is chosen smaller than in figure 6 or 7, moving the condition I squared AOL equals 1 to lower frequency. In this example, 1 slash I squared equals 77 decibels, and at low frequencies AFB a per mil 77 decibels as well. Figure 8 showed the gain plot. From figure 8, the intersection of 1 slash I squared and AOL occurs at FO decibel equals 1 kHz. Notice that the peak in the gain AFB near FO decibel is almost gone. Figure 9 is the phase plot. Using the value of FO decibel equals 1 kHz found above from the magnitude plot of figure 8, the open loop phase at FO decibel is a 135 a degree, which is a phase margin of 45 a degree above a 180 a degree. Using figure 9, for a phase of a 180 a degree the value of F180 equals 3.332 kHz. The open loop gain from figure 8 at F180 is 58 decibels, and 1 slash I squared equals 77 decibels, so the gain margin is 19 decibels. Stability is not the sole criterion for amplifier response, and in many applications a more stringent demand than stability is good step response. As a rule of thumb, Good step response requires a phase margin of at least 45 a degree, and often a margin of over 70 a degree is advocated, particularly where component variation due to manufacturing tolerances is an issue. See also the discussion of phase margin in the step response article. Examples Bowed plotter The bowed plotter is an electronic instrument resembling an oscilloscope, which produces a bowed diagram, or a graph of a circuit's voltage gain or phase shift plotted against frequency in a feedback control system or a filter. An example of this is shown in Figure 10. It is extremely useful for analyzing and testing filters and the stability of feedback control systems, through the measurement of corner frequencies and gain and phase margins. This is identical to the function performed by a vector network analyzer, but the network analyzer is typically used at much higher frequencies. For education research purposes, plotting bowed diagrams for given transfer functions facilitates better understanding and getting faster results. Related plots Two related plots that display the same data in different coordinate systems are the Nyquist plot and the Nichols plot. These are parametric plots, with frequency as the input and magnitude and phase of the frequency response as the output. The Nyquist plot displays these in polar coordinates with magnitude mapping to radius and phase to argument. 
the Nichols plot displays these in rectangular coordinates, on the log scale. Related plots See also, Nichols plot, analog signal processing, phase margin, Baud sensitivity integral, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, notes. References External links, explanation of Baud plots with movies and examples, how to draw piecewise asymptotic Baud plots, summarized drawing rules, Baud plotoplet, accepts transferred function coefficients as input, and calculates magnitude and phase response, circuit analysis in electrochemistry, Tim Green, Operational amplifier stability includes some Baud plot introduction, GNUplet code for generating Baud plot, DIN A4 printing template, MATLAB function for creating a Baud plot of a system, MATLAB tech talk videos explaining Baud plots and showing how to use them for control design, insert the poles and zeros and this website will draw the asymptotic and accurate. Baud plots, Mathematica function for creating the Baud plot.